When you first open Pages, you'll see a selection window like the one shown here. On the left, you can select from word processing formats or page layouts. If you've created any templates, those will show at the bottom on the left. The word processing options on the left are pre-set up for things like letters, envelopes, they have forms, resumes, and a variety of other options available. Most of the times you'll, you'll want to pick a blank and start from scratch, but if you choose to use the letters, you can just simply take the information out or retype over what they have. Now what you need to know, we may not actually have time to play with here, but there are some really nice page layout options for things like newsletters, brochures, if you need to post a flyer, they have cards and invitations, certificates, and business cards, and a very wide variety of options available there. So those are some things you may want to look at later. But for right now, we're going to start with a blank letter. And we want ours to be in the portrait format up and down, so we're going to open the blank. Once you've opened your blank letter, you'll notice that you're ready to type. Now there's a title bar here, and the cursor is actually ready on the first line. You'll notice that there are a lot of options at the top, different view options. And I want us to take a few minutes and just look at these, click on them, play with them some, and kind of see what they do. And we'll want to look at the inspector, which is a very important tool. It opens up when you click on it. So if you need it and you don't see it, you can click on inspector to hide it and click on inspector again to bring it back out. So spend a few minutes and look at the options across the top, the different icons that are available. So while you were checking some of the options for the icons at the top, you should have noticed View, and these are all different options. You can show the ruler or you can turn it off. Rulers, the numbers at the top there. You can also show different layouts. Show Invisibles is when you have formatting. If I hit Enter, the backwards looking P is a hard return. That means I hit Enter and so you can look for those sometimes when you have errors. Full screen makes it show on your whole screen and to get out of that you just hit escape. Outline, if you've typed a document and you want to see the outline view with ABCs and 123s and all the numbers and levels you can use this tool. Sections would be if you had inserted page breaks there's a text box tool that easily inserts a text box for you and then you can type in that and then you can also choose to move it around and relocate it. Now to undo, don't forget, edit, undo, I want to get rid of that. But the other thing, you can also use command Z as in zebra and that will undo. And that's the best way to do that is actually get used to that shortcut and it is command or the apple and Z like zebra and that will undo what you've done. Different shapes, it's easy to insert a shape, just click on it and there you have it. We can move it around by dragging and I'm going to command Z, tell that to go away. You can easily insert tables, it just pops it in there for you and it's ready to type in. Charts are available. Share makes it uh, easy to share using iWork and you actually have to have an account for that. Inspector we mentioned earlier that will turn off and on the options over here and we're going to discuss more of these in a little while because this is a whole another set of options available in pages. Media, you can use the media icon if you're going to insert media. This takes you to where your audio and your photos, photo booth, uh, anything that you have stored is here and available. Or movies, you can also use it for that tool. Colors, if you want to change different colors for your fonts, you can use the color icon or the font icon here. 
and there are also um, there is a really nice set of tools that stay on the toolbar where you can do the same thing much faster. So that's really what I prefer. Now if you wanted to use specific color palettes you may want to use this tool. And then of course the fonts that I mentioned and you know this toolbar across here is probably the best way to do that. So as a sample we're just going to type a block letter. Ooh, And notice I have no letters. This periodically happens so this is probably a good thing to find out. If you click on your colors Somehow, I have set my text color to be white, like the background of the paper. And uh, that happens to students quite often also. See, when I highlight it, you can see what I've typed there. So I'm going to change my text back to black. That's the color that's in this bar across the top. And once I do that, we can see the text again. So that was actually a pretty good opportunity to show you um, that common error. And so we are going to just type this letter and this is just using a block letter format. Now if you would like to uh, pick some fictitious topic and create a letter you may use that or you can use the one that I provided to you and if you'll just take a few minutes and type that and this is just like your standard you're going to type a letter see if there is anything that you are missing that you would typically want access to or that you can't find and make a note of those and we'll discuss them after you finish typing. Okay, now that you've finished typing your letter, um, if you'll look at the one I have in front of us, you'll notice that there are some words with some dashed lines under them. These are words that the word processor has selected as being misspelled. And so the easiest way to do this is going to be to click on the word and right click. So when you right click you'll notice it has the correct spelling. It has some other options here also. But we're going to click on the correct word and it will correct it for us. So right click and correct any misspelled words that you may have had in your document. Now typically in Word software, in Microsoft, there's three different ways to make changes like this. You usually have an option that's in the menu bar. You usually have an icon that will help you out. And there's an option to right click. In pages, a lot of things are on right click or in this toolbar where you don't have to go anywhere else. So we'll look at some of those as we go. Now the next thing we probably should do is to save our document. So if you'll click on File, Save As, and you're going to tell this where to save to. And I've chosen just to leave this on my desktop right now as I create it. And you'll notice that this is the name of the document, and it has .pages. That's the format that Pages uses. Now, that format is fine if you are always going to use this document in Pages, and you're not going to try to send it and share it with anyone else majority of the people will not have Mac Pages software. So what you'll need to do is to click down here where it says Save Copy As. And you can tell it to save as a Word document. And what it will do now is to save a copy of this as a Word document. And you'll notice that the name at the top has a .doc at the end now for a document file which is Word. So if you'll click Save, then it will save it as a doc file. Now the other thing, once you've already saved, you can use File Save. It will automatically save where you've already placed it. You can also use the shortcut, which is Command S, as in Snake. And that will also save once you've already identified where you want your document to go. The next thing you will want to do is to print your document and printing is very much like you've always printed. You'll go to the word file and you'll click on print. Now it's not going to let me do this because I'm in my screen recording software but it will be file print and your usual screen will appear so that you can tell it which printer you'd like to send the document to. So the next thing I think we should look at is where all of the tools are. 
Sometimes you may accidentally click a button or you may open pages and you don't see the tools that you need. So I think it's important to know how to turn those off and on. We already mentioned the inspector, which is the eye. And so we can click that and turn it on or turn it off, depending on if you need it. A lot of times you really don't have to use this. Um, there are so many built-in options at the top. But if you'll go to View, you'll notice there are some options for hiding rulers, which I showed you earlier. But Hide Format Bar, if you click that, you'll notice that your formatting tools go away. Those are very convenient when they are placed at the top of the menu. So be sure that you remember to go to View and you can show Format Bar. Now the other thing that sometimes may disappear is at the bottom, the toolbar. If you hide the toolbar, you don't have all of the useful icons. So once again, you can always go to View. View stands for what you see on your screen, what you, what you view, what tools. Window is very similar. That will be what you see on your page when you're working. They don't have anything to do with what prints, just what you're seeing and how you work with your tools. Now, if we look at the format bar for a moment, you'll notice there's a show or hide the styles drawer. And that is an extra toolbar or extra options that have heading formats and character emphasis. All of these things are actually on your formatting toolbar. So you really don't need to see them again. You can use paragraph style by clicking on the backwards P. So if you want to make something a header, you can highlight it, and you can select Heading 1. These are built-in formats that can be very useful for many documents. And I'm going to Command-Z and undo that. And if you wanted to choose to underline or strike through, here's your bold option. Here's your underline option. And then here's strike through. All those options are very convenient on the toolbar. The formats we discussed, you can pick all of the different fonts here. Regular is typeface. There again, if you want it to stay bold, you can tell it bold. If you want it to be bold and italicized, then they call it bold oblique. Sizes for fonts, if you want to make something larger, that's all available right there without having to open any other toolbars. This is a color for the text. Remember when my text was white? you can choose a text color by clicking here also. Um, this is a background color if you want it for text, which is not something you would use very often. There's another option here if you would like to um, bold. You can click on the B, or here's the standard I for italics, or underline options that are already there and you don't have to click anywhere else to get to those. Now, left align, center, I'm sure you're already familiar with these. You can move things to the right or justify text, which you can't really tell from this. But if I select this first paragraph, we may have enough text to tell that it's justified. And that just means that it brings all the text all the way from the left margin to the right margin. Typically, that would be something you would use in a newsletter. Newspapers use that a lot also. This is line spacing. This is columns. If you want to create columns for a section of your document, you have some data that's going to be side by side or would appear best side by side. If you will select the sections that you want to show in columns, you can split them. And um, this actually split the whole document. That's not my intent. But you should be able to highlight the text, even some more options there. Most all of the things we've looked at are the most common things that you will use in pages.